In this video, I'm going to be breaking down one of my poster design projects from my Blues Legend series, the one I did for Howling Wolf. I had a few people ask me how I got some of the textures and what my process was for laying out the type and what kind of fonts I use. Let's hop into it. So this is how I actually designed the poster. So here is the finished poster basically before I printed it, except when I print it, I just print it on transparent because I was actually using the yellow paper. And the layout of this is pretty simple. I just set up some kind of grid. I usually do that by going into here, new guide layout, and just setting up a basic grid to work with and then kind of adjusting based off how I want to lay everything out. The way I've been going about these posters for the Blues Legend series is using a hero image of the actual artist, some kind of small tagline and the actual artist name and what the... Uh, album is called and i've been using the track list as kind of like other small information or things like this chicago blues memphis recording service and the thing i like about creating these posters is it takes away some of the kind of decision fatigue and creative block of thinking of all the copy and stuff when you want to work with a more typographic style for the font here i'm using tenon extra bold and you can actually get that one on adobe fonts for free if you have the adobe subscription I believe I used that for each of these. And to create some hierarchy, I kind of just used the extra bold and bold version, and then the regular versions for some of the smaller copy. And this is a good way to kind of create some hierarchy with different font sizes and weights when all using the same thing and help create, make the poster feel more balanced overall. I want to do like a simple kind of Xerox type thing on the actual image. So you can see this is the image I actually started with. Just an old picture of Howlin' Wolf. I really liked the energy that it brought and I felt like it represented the actual album. And from there, I used the Ink Lab plugin to create kind of a half tone type thing. Super subtle, but just helps to kind of separate it from being like a basic image. For this one, I used the advanced mode. Uh, pattern diffusion and then I usually set this stuff to 150 dpi keep all that the same and turn this all off and then when I go in there what I do is I take out these layers and I just keep the black layer and I duplicate it to kind of darken it a bit can also create effects like this within the filter gallery using or using the bitmap um, effects over here in the bitmap mode from there i just cut out i use the layer mask to just cut out the this font so it'd be s transparent like that how i did that was i had the font filled in like this i held control and see that little square popped up and you click that then you can just go into the mask and fill it in with black to kind of cut out an exact shape like that other than that it's pretty simple um, then i printed that out so i printed it out like this and what I usually do actually is print it on both sides. Cause if you could see when I, when you hold it up to the light, it actually creates like this cool see-through effect where you can see some of the ghosting imagery from the back. And I like when I scan that in, that stuff kind of shows through in the scan. So here's the original scan. You can see some of the images coming through the back right there. And just some grain and shit from my scanner and printer being a little dirty. But then I usually print it smaller like that just to save ink and kind of create a little more of a lower quality effect. And I just use, I just scale it up to fit my margins like that, however it should look. But yeah, printing stuff like that, especially with the laser printer on colored paper like this, super cheap and cost effective way to create some cool textures. And I don't think there's any way to replicate it digitally that looks just as good as the printed version. And when the paper is colored, the actual yellow shows through, not just a texture you're overlaying on a colored image. And some of these jagged edges from the actual printing process, it's just makes it look a lot better. Then I just use the filter gallery to kind of boost up some of the contrast, vibrance, lower the blacks and stuff, just to give it a little bit more punch. That's pretty much it for this though. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.